Thank you, assembled guests, black hole enthusiasts. Black holes are the most mysterious objects in the universe. They're cloaked by an event horizon where their gravity prevents even light from escaping. And yet, the matter that falls onto the event horizon is superheated so that before it passes through, it shines very, very brightly. We now believe that supermassive black holes, millions, even billions of times the mass of our sun, exist in the centers of most galaxies. And because they are so small that we have never seen one, there, though, they can outshine the combined starlight of all the constituent stars in those galaxies. The best idea we have of what they can look like come from simulations like this. The infalling gas that's superheated lights up a ring of light where photons orbit the black hole. And interior to that is a dark patch where the event horizon itself prevents light from escaping. The Event Horizon Telescope project is dedicated to the idea that we can make an image of this black hole that we can set a ruler across this shadow feature, measure the photon ring, and test Einstein's theory where they might break down. It also will allow us access to a region of the universe where we can study precisely the energetics uh, and how black holes dominate the cores of galaxies. To do this, we worked for over a decade to link telescopes around the globe to make an Earth-sized virtual dish. The aim is to, I'm sorry, the. Uh, the, the, the Event Horizon Telescope achieves the highest angular resolution possible from the surface of the Earth. It's the equivalent of being able to read the date on a quarter in Los Angeles when we're standing here in Washington, D.C. In April of 2017, all the dishes in the Event Horizon Telescope swiveled, turned, and stared at a galaxy 55 million light years away. It's called Messier 87 or M87. And there's a supermassive black hole at its core. And we are delighted to be able to report to you today that we have seen what we thought was unseeable. We have seen and taken a picture of a black hole. Here it is. This is a remarkable achievement. Uh, what you're seeing here is the last photon orbit. What you are seeing is evidence of an event horizon. By laying a ruler across this black hole, we now have visual evidence for a black hole. We now know that a black hole that weighs 6.5 billion times what our sun does exists in the center of M87. And this is the strongest evidence that we have to date for the existence of black holes. And it is also consistent, the shape of this shadow to the precision of our measurements with Einstein's predictions. The bright patch in the south that you see tells us that material moving around the black hole is moving at light speeds, which is also consistent with our simulations and predictions. And this image forges a clear link now between supermassive black holes and the engines of bright galaxies. We now know clearly that black holes drive large-scale structure in the universe from their home in these galaxies. And we now have an entirely new way of studying general relativity in black holes that we never had before. And as with all great discoveries, this is just the beginning. So imaging a black hole doesn't come easily. I can tell you that from personal experience, as can many people here in the audience. It's required long-term developments, a committed team, but it also required some very interesting cosmic coincidences. Take, for example, the, the maelstrom you see before you, like the hot gas swirling around the black hole, a photon has to leave from close to the event horizon, travel through the hot gas in falling to the, to the black hole, and light rays of a millimeter wavelength, radio waves, can make that journey. Not all of them can. Then that radio wave has to propagate 60,000 years through the M87 galaxy, and then another 55 million years through intergalactic space. And then it winds up in the Earth's atmosphere, where its greatest enemy, the greatest danger, is that it will be absorbed by water vapor in our own atmosphere. So the Event Horizon Telescope uses telescopes at high dry sites so that we can see the photons that have traveled to us so far. So, so far, so good. We have the, we have the photons. Um, but the M87 shadow is very, very small compared to the galaxy that surrounds it. So in order to see it, we needed to build a telescope as large as the Earth itself, given the wavelength of light we were trying to observe. And to do that, we use a technique called very long baseline interferometry, 
which you can see a schematic of here. Radio waves from the black hole hit radio telescopes where they're recorded with the precision of atomic clocks that lose only one second every 10 million years. When you've registered these radio waves so precisely, you can then store them on hard disk drives, send them to a central facility where they can be combined precisely. It's exactly the same way that a mirror used at an optical telescope reflects light perfectly and in synchronicity to a single focus.